This man is Todd Dwayne. He's a Christian rock and progressive rock and metal artist who's most well known for his guitar instrumentals. In the mid 90s, Todd was trying to get a record deal with the legendary label Shrapnel Records, so he quickly put together a demo CD of his guitar playing and sent it to them hoping to get a record deal, which he did in 1995 and released a self-titled album full of new guitar instrumentals. Now, he also sent that demo CD to other people, one of them being a game development company called Head Games. And unbeknownst to Todd, they would later put the contents of his demo CD into their game Extreme Paint Brawl. Would you like to know what that music sounded like? Well, it sounds like this. Where do I even start with this? So, okay, first off, let me just start off by saying Todd is obviously a gifted guitar player, and you can tell in some parts of these songs that he definitely knows what he's doing, and he really did intend for the songs to sound like this. Like, there are parts of these songs that actually sound like music. <laughs> Wow, just wow. From the speed metal drums on crack, to the drunk sounding piano, to the fucking animal noises. It's like, what if there was such a thing as music in a different language? Maybe we don't get this music because we don't understand it. We need a translation into proper music theory. My other theory is Todd Dwayne is an alien and this music is from his home planet. Let me play you the song of my people. Or maybe this is just what prog rock sounds like. I've listened to prog before. This is kind of what brain salad surgery sounds like to me. I mean, there are some weird music genres out there. Noise rock, shoegaze, drone metal. You want to know what drone metal is? Okay, well, take a guitar and tune the biggest string down until it's flopping around. Then turn all the amp knobs to 10 and then chug on that for a little while. You'll make a whole album with it. That's drone metal. Todd Dwayne sounds like he's trying to contact an alternate dimension. I haven't even gotten to the game yet. Oh my god, the game itself is a whole nother sack of tomatoes. So the game has like a quick play mode where you can just click on one thing and start playing the game immediately. Or you can do a career mode where you buy your own paintball equipment and then try to take on the other teams and become the best paint brawler in the world. You do the whole thing of managing a team, managing their equipment. You have to buy your own air and paintballs. It goes into pretty big detail. So that kind of lures you in and makes you think you're going to play something good. That is if you have the audio muted. So this is a build engine game, the same engine that made Duke Nukem 3D, Blood, and Shadow Warrior. For some odd reason, the menus are in Windows, but the gameplay is in DOS. I don't know why that is. But the odd thing is, this game came out in 1998, and by that time, the build engine was getting old. Quake and Unreal were already doing things that the build engine could never do. And then comes this game, and it's pretty ugmo, even for the build engine. Like what, we're playing paintball in a space station? This looks more like Star Wars Dark Forces. So you have a blue team and a red team, and you have to eliminate everybody on the opposite team. But you can also grab their flag and take it to your base. You only need to shoot an enemy one time to kill them. When you're out, you switch to another team member and play some more. God, this weapon sprite is all up in my vision. Could they have not made that more distracting? It is really hard to hit anybody in this damn game. You do have mouse aiming, which is nice, but it's inverted, ew, and you have no crosshair, and all of your bullets kind of act like grenades. They go for a little bit, and then they fall on the floor. So you have to kind of raise your weapon up and down to kind of change your trajectory. It's the only way to get any range out of these weapons. Have I told you about the controls yet? Wait till you hear this shit. You want to know how you move forward in this game? Take a wild guess. Is it the arrow keys? Well, this is before WASD, so it's got to be the arrow keys, right? No. 
control. Right click on the mouse. You use the right mouse button to move forward and the mouse to go left and right. The good news is you can change it. But the fact is, that was the default setup they wanted you to use when you started the game by default? What? This game is glitchy as fuck, too. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, what's going on here? Oh, and I just teleported somewhere else. Nice teleport, paintballer. There's also this really weird noise in the game. I think it happens when your paintball gun is out of air. Dude, that sounds like some really freaky breathing or some shit. Don't let Chills listen to that. He'll make a video about it. Number 15, creepy paintball game. If you play the game Extreme Paint Brawl on Microsoft Windows at night, you might hear a sound that might disturb you. It sounds like somebody having their throat slit open and dying. I don't know if that's what it is, but let me know what you think in the comments. Man, Chills is such a nice guy. I hope it doesn't turn out he's a child diddler or some shit, because you know the jokes people will make. Number 15 is not the age of consent. <laughs> this Looney Tunes ass shit. I feel like I'm about to see the Roadrunner and the Coyote whiz by. Hold still, bitch. I need to get you. Come here. Oh, that's my teammate. Uh, friendly fire. What's funny is you can win by doing absolutely nothing. Sometimes your teammates will beat the other team themselves. You the winner. And the trophy goes to the guy who sat there and played with his phone all day. Hey, if I don't take care of my vault and fallout shelter, who will? So what did people have to say about this amazing game? Well, the Philadelphia Daily News called it the first non-violent first-person shooter, which is completely wrong because Super Noah's Ark 3D exists. A lot of people criticized the AI, which was really bad about getting stuck on walls and doors and shit. Wait, you're telling me that you've never walked into a wall and expected it to get out of your way? I'm insulted. Also, this game has been on tons of worst games of all time lists before, and you can kind of understand why. It's just... It's not good. It's kind of stupid. The music sounds like you gave Eddie Van Halen a bunch of crack. The controls make absolutely no sense, and you get that feeling in the back of your mind when you play this game that you're wasting your time. If you play this game, you will age faster. If you play this game, you will go infertile. If you play this game, your dog will get run over. What I'm trying to say is, it's not very good. And would you believe me if I told you there is not one sequel, but three sequels? Now, I didn't play these games, but I did look at them and oh my god, how do you make something bad even worse? This is the second one. Oh my god, it looks so jank. At least they didn't bring back Todd Dwayne. And then the third one, look how slow you move. That has to be horrible. And the fourth one just looks like a bad Half-Life mod of some kind. Guys, remember that thing that used to be on the internet called FPS Creator? Where you had this little engine that you can make your own games in? This is what this reminds me of. In fact, I think this might even be the same engine. So that's about all I've got for Extreme Paint Brawl. I was actually going to get an interview with Todd Dwayne, but I couldn't find anywhere on social media that he was still active on. He did have a YouTube channel, but he took it down. So I guess it's best if I just leave him alone. Well, that's gonna do it for today's episode. Next time you see me, we'll be doing CDI games, baby. That's right, it's gonna be a CDI double feature. We'll have one video where we do CDI games you've probably never seen before, and then we'll do Zelda CDI. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Sorry if this one's a little short. Well, there wasn't much to say about this game. But anyway, I hope you liked it either way. Also, I'm thinking about getting back into streams again. What do you think? Do you want me to do that again? My internet is way better, and I think I could do it a lot better than I did back then. With enough time and experience, I think it could be something good. Anyway, this is Stuart K. Riley, and I'll see y'all later.